What's up, y'all? So this is one of my favorite Robert Johnson riffs. And the reason I like it so much is because it has kind of two moving parts in it. He's got this cool shuffle going on. And then without breaking the shuffle, he does this riff. Now that riff is from Sweet Home Chicago, one of his best songs, and it's one of my favorite riffs. And the goal of today's lesson is to learn how you can take a riff like that, that you might already know, and expand upon it and make it your own or make other variations on it so you can play longer periods of time. So once you understand how to do the riffs, you should try to take them and put them in more of a musical context like a 12 bar blues. Here's an example that I'm gonna do a slow playthrough at the end of this video, but let's hear how it sounds at normal speed. And then you would just repeat, hopefully with some variations. So we're taking that same rhythm like we had in the first one. One and a two and three and four and a one and a two and three and four. And then just plugging in different notes. And three and four and a one and a two and three and four. The rhythm's the same and the mechanics of the right hand are the same. All you need to know is what notes can we plug in here? Let's start by learning the original riff and then how we can make it into a variation. The riff that we're using here is basically just a one measure phrase that Robert puts into Sweet Home Chicago a few times. The first thing you gotta know is the timing. One and a two and three and four and a one and a two and three and four and a. So there's the triplet on one and triplet on four. There's two little riffs in there. On beat one, we have this. So notice we're plucking together, hammer on, and then together again. Right after that, get into the shuffle as if we never stopped doing it. Now the second riff on beat four of the measure goes like this. Four and uh, So it's thumb, middle finger, and then thumb and index together like that. So it's four and uh, one and uh, two and three and four and uh, one and uh, three, four. One and a uh, two and three and four and a uh, one and a uh, two and three and four and a uh, one and a uh, two and three and four and a uh, one and a uh, two and three and four. And then you would just try to repeat that. Get that under your fingers first before we can start to do some variations. Let's not change too much about it. Let's keep the rhythm exactly the same, but just plug in some different notes. Let's use some notes from the blues scale and then just keep those rhythms the same. This is the riff that we came up with. Hopefully you can hear we've kept the rhythm exactly the same. One and uh, two, and three and four and uh, one and uh, two and three and four and uh, so to get those notes from this variation we're just using the blues scale like this it's good to know those notes from the blues scale so you can plug them in now just for fun let's plug in a second variation on this same riff so something you could play like this So there we're just plugging in some different notes on beat four, where we go four and a one and a two and, and then back into the shuffle, okay? So once you've kind of learned the mechanic from then plugging in this riff feels about the same. So see what I mean about kind of mindset and learning mechanics, it's so important. 
Now, finally, you want to plug this into more of a musical context and not just a riff. So for that, we're just going to plug it into the 12 bar blues. Now, remember, if you've memorized this form of the 12 bar blues where we have the three rows of four, then all you have to do is plug in these riffs in each section. And you might be wondering, well, OK, so we have the riff on the E phrase, but what about what can we do over the A chord and the B7 chord? Well, that's part of being creative on this. So you have a few options. So you can either plug in a new riff over the A chord, plug in the same riff over the A chord, or kind of play basic shuffle variations, boogie woogie variations, or more of a chord and rhythm based variation. Before we jump into the 12 bar blues example, I want to show you how you can basically transpose the original riff up to the key of A. Let's hear the riff first. Hopefully you can hear how it sounds like the same riff, but higher in pitch. And the reason for that is because all the intervals are the same from the original riff. So instead of we've done. This goes a long way. And as you study and learn more about music theory, those things become really fast. You can just do them without thinking. Now that's how you can take the riff and place it over the A chord. So now I'm going to play the 12 bar blues example, but I'm just going to do chord and rhythm based stuff over the A and the B7 chord. And that's so that y'all can focus on the main riff over E. I think it'd be valuable to spend the time on learning the original riff in the original song, Sweet Home Chicago. I'll link that lesson at the end of this lesson. But once you can do that, try this variation and then see if you can come up with your own variations. That would be the next assignment for y'all to work on. So let's plug this into the 12 bar blues. I'm going to play it really, really slow so y'all can try to play along. So one, two, three, four. Here's the thing, the main benefit from doing this type of thing, learning and spending a lot of time on kind of like an easy-ish phrase, it's not an easy phrase, but once you get that phrase under your fingers, it's so much easier to start adding other variations, other rhythmic variations, adding extra notes, pull-offs, building upon what you've already done. I think that's a big mistake that a lot of people will make is they try to jump into the hardest example first without mastering some of the easier things that are building blocks into getting into those more advanced riffs. Here's some more examples just kind of building upon what we just did. So that's a subtle variation using a different rhythm and then different notes. Once you understand the concept, hopefully mentally that process is fairly easy for you. And then the challenge is going to be trying to learn that by repetition. So I hope this was really helpful. Thanks so much for watching, y'all. If you want to see my lesson on Sweet Home Chicago, check it out over here. This was actually the very first video that I recorded for this channel. And for all my members that are supporting me, I want to say thank you to each and every one of y'all. It's very much appreciated. It's the only way that I could keep this stuff going. So thanks so much for joining FGA members. And if you haven't yet, click on the link in the description and join FGA members and you can download all the tabs to all my YouTube lessons. For now, check out this video over here and I'll see you guys there.